Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, we're going to show you what that 48 volts of phantom power does on the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. The same thing happens on the Focusrite Scarlett Solo audio interface or almost any other audio interface or audio mixer on the market. The quick answer is that 48 volts of phantom power is what's required in order to activate any condenser microphone. In this video today, we have a dynamic microphone, we have the Shure SM58, and we have a condenser microphone, the Neat Worker B condenser microphone. Right now you're just listening to the lav mic that's clipped onto me. If you want pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have some links in the description below, so please check that out if you're interested in purchasing anything that you see here. So first of all, we're going to try the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone with out and then with phantom power, and then we'll move on to the condenser microphone without and then with phantom power. So we're going to flip this up just so you can see what I'm doing. Over in GarageBand here, I am going to hit record on the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. So now you can hear the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. You can see that phantom power is turned off. Now I'm going to turn it on to see if you can hear a difference. When I turn phantom power on, if you're listening really closely, you should not hear any difference whatsoever. You might hear a pop when that phantom power is initially turned on, but when I'm actually talking in the microphone, you should hear no difference whatsoever. The vast majority of dynamic microphones are they see phantom power as being invisible. It doesn't affect them whatsoever, hence calling it phantom power. They, it's just there, but it doesn't affect them whatsoever. There is a very small percentage of microphones out there that are considered to be unbalanced dynamic microphones. These microphones may make sound, but again, they are very unlikely to be damaged by phantom power. If you do hear some buzzing or clicking, it's recommended that you turn it off. As a general rule, just to reduce that one in a million shot of of hurting a microphone, then it is recommended that you do keep that phantom power turned off if you don't need it, such as when you're using a condenser microphone. If you're using a ribbon microphone, you can very easily damage your ribbon microphone by using phantom power. So again, it is recommended that you do leave it off, although I've accidentally done this hundreds if not thousands of times in my interaction with microphones and I've yet to damage or hear any repercussions from it whatsoever. So that's just my experience. So we're going to turn this off now. Now I'm going to go over to GarageBand, stop this recording and then start the recording on the condenser microphone. Okay, so now we're recording the condenser microphone, but as you can see, we are getting no signal whatsoever out of it. You can hear my lav mic that's clipped on right now, but as you can see in GarageBand, there is no movement, there is no power. It's not like this microphone sounds bad without phantom power. You just cannot hear it at all. It will simply not work. So now I'm going to turn on phantom power. You will see a pop in the meter in GarageBand, so just watch for that. There you see that spike as the microphone is activated. Again, it's kind of necessary. It won't hurt the microphone. There's no other way to do it. You just have to turn the phantom power on. When you're connecting condenser microphones to your audio interface, it is always recommended that you connect everything first before you turn on phantom power. There are some rumors or horror stories of people connecting microphones to their audio interface. One phantom power was turned on, and I guess there was a small arc there, and it did damage the microphone or audio interface. So as a general rule, when you're plugging it and unplugging things, try to keep the phantom power off. And then when you're all connected, like we were here, you can turn it on. Now, as you can hear, clearly we have switched over to this condenser microphone, the Neat Worker B. This is an awesome little inexpensive condenser microphone. I'm recommending it pretty heavily right now just because of the affordability and how good it sounds for the price. But you can see here that obviously it is working now, and this is what's required. You do need that 48 volts of phantom power in order to activate or to get this microphone to work uh, at all. So if you have any questions about anything that we've covered in this video, again, if you want pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, please check out the links in the description below or leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, we film videos like this all the time, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. <music>